Welcome back to another episode of the Melito Gems Podcast. It is your host, K I W L A. And I got something fresh for y'all for this time, man. This time around, give me y'all something fresh. Last time y'all might have seen this man's. I had him probably think one of my early episodes. He gave y'all what the definition of city is. And you know what? I felt like we were running in the same lanes for so long that I think I needed to make him a part of this podcast too, because he got some real sitchy shit to say. Like this is sitchy certified, yes, sir. Mister Sitchy. Yes, Any way you want to call it. Yes, but sir. I had to bring my guy Miles Earl back on, so um, he will now be a part of this podcast. Now this will now be a two man thing. All right, so y'all will be able to tune in when we start doing live streams. Um. Some episodes will still keep the interviews, but we will also have a city conversation damn near about every time. And I'm telling you, it's going to be 10 times more city than the first one. So, our audience, welcome back and welcome to the Millennium Gems podcast permanently. Miles Earl. Yes, yes. What's hey, going man. on, my guy? Not much, man. I'm cool, you know. Taking it day by day, grinding every day. You know how that go. Heard you. You want me good? Do you want me to call you by miles or you just want to call you Sitchy, bro? Hey, man, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know what? This because I, I think Sitchy just sounds like killer and Sitchy just sound like, oh, oh, so that's what you're doing. Dynamic you know, duo. You're always repping, too. You're so, always repping. You know, so, heard you. All right. So, y'all can address this man <laughs> as Sitchy. All right. Every time you see him, it's Sitchy. Put some respect on it. You know that. But, um, I just wanted to start off this episode with kind of just, you know, asking you, like, what what have you been into as of lately? Since this the last time we had a conversation, we interviewed, like, what's kind of changed? What what new things have you started to kind of take on? What new ventures? What's new in your life at the moment? Yeah, man. So last time we spoke, uh, I was in a process in the middle of, like, a Halloween drop, a Chucky Halloween drop. And, uh, yeah, it's which, been which look, It looked lit, honestly. Yeah, you know? It was a nighttime on a uh, Sitchy Street with, with Chucky and a few other of uh, the horror film um, favorites I had growing up. I had put a blend in my old little little twist to that on there. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, I just been studying every day, um, watching other podcasts, watching other YouTube videos, and just soaking up the game, looking at people who are doing what I'm doing at a higher level because I want to be able to imitate that pretty soon. And, you know, when you look at people that are doing what you're doing at a higher level, you get more motivated, you stay motivated, and it's easier for you to stay on track. Um, I don't watch too much TV anymore, to be honest. Like, I couldn't tell you when's the last time an NBA game came on or the last time a certain show came on because my TV is literally off. You know, before I go to bed, I'm either watching a podcast or I'm editing a video. And that, that pretty much wraps up my whole day. Like I'm, I'm or making up some t-shirts, getting orders done. Yeah, man, my biggest thing is just I don't want to be where I was at last year, so I have to constantly keep growing, constantly keep learning, and um, imitate the ones that are doing what I'm doing at a higher level. You know, just making sure I have a a blueprint to follow through with, and you know, just staying on task, man, because it's easy to fall off. And yeah, um, that for sure. No, I, no, I totally agree. Like I've been kind of. In the same row, honestly, running, kind of been doing the same thing for the past maybe like almost four years. Like as of like recently, like I haven't really watched much TV to be honest either. Like I, I haven't watched much NBA games. I might have caught like March Madness. I might watch my shows, you know, like Power and BMF, like here and there when they drop. But that's really about the only time I might turn on my TV for like that one hour just to watch. Outside of that, I'm right back to just you know, grinding and trying to just get to the money and kind of just, you know, building up my brand. That's kind of just always been my, my focus and it's going to remain my focus until I get where I want to get to. Absolutely. And that's, that's how it got to be, man. It's like, you look at, it's eat like coming into the space, people see the good side of it. Um, but it's, not, I wouldn't even necessarily say anything's bad, but it's really just the ugly and greedy side of things as well because you may see other people, you may see entrepreneurs online flashing the money, flashing the oh, win. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, who's really flashing at the downfalls and 
the the losses you got to take. Well, actually, let's correct that. The lessons you got to take to to come, you know, to convert those back to higher wins. Um, nobody's really showing that. I mean, a few people are, but you'll see a lot more people, you know, portraying this. Oh, entrepreneurship is easy. I work for myself. This, that, and the third. But no one's really getting into the itty gritty about that. And um, it's important, man, because everybody want to be entrepreneur, but who want to put the work in? Exactly. And like, you know? I mean, I've always just looked at like social media. Just honestly, it got to a point where now it's like I don't believe everything. I don't believe everything that I see on social media. I, I, I've come to believe that social media is literally just, it's just a highlight reel. That's highlight. all it is. Like everybody just highlights all the good. <laughs> even if one of, even if some people want to be transparent about probably 95% of everything you see on Instagram is just the glorified shit. Just all the, all the good, all the, the positive, like all the good things that have happened. Don't nobody see like the gritty, like when you losing money, when you really, you you had to do, had a bad deal like don't nobody see the the negatives everything's just glorified and positive yeah they're so. not talking about it but it's important though man because with every type of success you have there's some type of process that you go that you have to go through to either learn or be better at what you are working on right now in the future or like you know how it how the table want to turn for you but there's always a stepping stone and learning curve to everything you do especially if you're trying to be a master at it. And you? like my biggest thing, like I said, I'm really with this whole entrepreneurship and me just learning more about myself and the, and the process of this, I'm really trying to change the narrative of my household. I'm trying to change the narrative of my family tree. I'm trying to break generational curses and I'm trying to be that just that person to in the family to break that bridge between being middle class or a lower class, whatever you want to call it, to really, you know, being about the Benjamins, as, as they would say. And what that comes is it's a, it's a lot of relearning things, reprogramming your brain, because you can't do the same things you're doing last year and expect new results. Something exactly. got to switch up. You got to continue to elevate in any type of way. And with that being said, as you mentioned, you know, what type of things I'm up to now, um, I'm doing a lot more reading. Um, and I actually just started YouTube. So I'm on a YouTube journey right now, you know, doing this vlogging. Learning about you know what type of videos I should be putting out. So I'm really in, I'm really in the testing phase right now, seeing what right. works, what doesn't work. Yep. You know how I should format my videos. Um. Yes. And like I said, it's a learning curve right now, and I'm enjoying everything, every process of it, every bit of the process. And um, well, that's literally exactly how I felt with like YouTube hey. right now. Like um, I've been I said this year that I was gonna probably put pu start pushing YouTube a little bit more. It's kind of like the main platform that I start to focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, seeing how, I mean, not that I really care about TikTok. Uh, I mean, they, I tried, I made an account again and, and they banned me. I don't know why they banned me. So, you know, really they can go to hell if they get banned from the U S and so be it, but I can care, care less. And then, you know, IG is cool, but, uh, I just felt like YouTube just might be like that platform for me to really, you know, grow an audience you know especially you know making like long form content now exactly. um because you know you ig you know everybody's attention span is so small and you know i understand that you know people want scintillating you know stimulating content so mm -hmm. you know why not work on on youtube so uh yeah i wanted to just uh kind of ask you like what why did you choose to go youtube route yeah, so as it seemed like like it seemed like like TikTok and like IG like things might have been hitting for you, but like why? Not not saying like you know you should you shouldn't have, but just kind of like what what was like your 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 I guess your thinking process of like all right, I want to make this transition to YouTube. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just like I said earlier about um just watching people that are doing what I'm doing at a higher level, and I'm seeing what they're doing and I'm um, imitating it, and, and because I'm I'm seeing first of all. For one, you have to be able to adapt with the time. That's for one. So I, I'm I'm really taking the whole being in front of the camera thing um, to another level because I'm not really the person that's in front of the camera, believe it or not, whether y'all see my videos. But I'm learning how to how to do that, how to be confident in the videos and not worrying about any little mistake because things are going to happen. But I'm really just learning as, as, as I'm going. And 
it's just like to be honest, like any person that is selling any type of products online, it's easy to sell when you have some type of personality behind it. Mm-hmm. And with you know, with TikTok and Instagram, yeah, you may be able to make a little bit of vi- like some videos, but they don't they don't necessarily have to have any voice over them. Well, you don't have to even be speaking over them. You can have some type of audio and just record you. But the biggest thing with being a clothing brand owner or just selling anything in general, people want to know what type of person you are. And with the YouTube, I feel like I can display the, display a little bit more of my personality and my messages, um, as well as well as just like what I live by with the clothing brand, so people can understand me a little more and have a better feel for me. So that when if it does come that you feel like you want to purchase something, you know what the value of it is and you know where it's coming from. So I feel like the main thing is just like. And top of which, obviously, just wanted to be on YouTube and try to hold YouTube journey out. Uh, I think it's really important for my audience to know what type of person I am. Um, and, you know, my my whole just like a little more about me. And, and that's what I plan on doing, just showing a little more about, a little more of like an inside me with the YouTube. Um, just so people have a better understanding of what I, what I stand for, you know, who I am, why I'm doing this, where I came from, and what I plan on being in the future. So just, you know, just kind of help new people that that are coming into the channel or, or older people that are because believe it or not you know a lot of people that support me support me before through just like the designs that they don't necessarily know what right. the whole meaning is so i feel like when you, if i have somebody that understands the meaning and how they can actually relate it to their life it becomes more powerful you become more relatable and it, it, it just makes it a lot more easier to relate to you and i look at rappers and other actors and things like that like it's necessary. When you're able to connect with somebody, it it just makes things a lot more better. You feel like you know this person even though you really don't, but it's just the connection that, that just holds the 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 loyalty to that person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to just really do is just, you know, be in front of be in front of the camera and display a lot more of me to my audience, um, so that we can all grow all together. You know? All right, Andy. So that's pretty much, you know, how I, how I look at it and I'm just trying to like I said, be a little more uh, present in the in the fact of delivering the messages, deli- well, delivering my message across the world so that people don't have any hiccups or um, disbelief of anything that I haven't necessarily said. Because I'm going to display everything else on there. And if anybody has any questions, they can always relate back to my videos. Um, yeah, man, it's really trying to kind of just set a, a platform for my audience as well as myself to, to for us to all just go together i heard you um i want to go back to this idea of like this entrepreneurship bro because mm-hmm. like you mentioned earlier this shit ain't easy like ain't easy. <laughs> this ain't this shit is not for ain't the week like you <laughs> literally i've come to learn now in like the past like what almost three almost three years that i've been kind of exploring as being because of as an aspiring entrepreneur or solopreneur however somebody wants to describe it this is hard goddamn work in the words of sydney dean from white man can't jump this is hard goddamn work i'm telling you like the ups and downs, the roller coaster, like just just the emotions, the constantly being in your head, the, yeah, yeah. the questioning, everything. It literally it takes a toll on you. Like there's just been so many instances where I'm just like, "Yo, is am I am I supposed to be doing this? Like, yeah. can I can I really handle this? Like, this is." hard as shit like this is hard this is some. this is a probably one of the hardest things i've ever had to commit to in my life and i don't have a problem committing to things right entrepreneurship being showing up as one it is sh- hard goddamn work mm-hmm. so kind of like just tell me like what's been like your experience like with it you know so far okay. yeah so uh with this whole entrepreneurship you know, there's highs, there's lows, there's mediums, um, within the business, and then you have the highs, the lows, and mediums within yourself. And what I mean by that is how you see your business, whether you feel like it's it's going how you want it to go, or if it's going how it's supposed to go, 
mm-hmm. the way you interpret it. And about, you know, just the whole entrepreneurship thing, you have to have a positive mindset, which always cuts back down into my meshes and my clothing brand. Because things are gonna occur, occur and the only way you get you surpass them is with a positive mindset. You may have a drop where you do really good. You may have a drop where you flop. You may lose out on money. But what do you do within that time frame? A lot of people will, will sit up and, and, and blame the close ones that's, that's next to them that are, because they're not purchasing. But in all reality, what all this is, is you have to take a step back and look at what worked, what didn't work, what did I do, what can I do better, and move forward. Doing, doing, the, taking your lessons and 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 applying them and making them your advantage for the next drop or whatever, whatever you're doing next. Like everything is a learning curve, you know. And people look at it Agree. as, oh, I lost. People don't support me. No, what didn't you do? Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe your delivery wasn't right. Check how you came out. Was the marketing right? Did you display your message right? Did Yo, like, oh my gosh. Yo, this literally ties into something I literally just learned yesterday. So shout out to David Shands, who doesn't know that I'm like a mentee and he's like a mentee, a mentor to me from afar. But David Shands, you know, I've been following him for like the past, like um, maybe two, two years now. My brother put me on to him about this mm. whole like podcast thing. So that's why I've started to do the podcasting thing yep. because of him. So shout out to David Shands. But shout I was watching one of his... um. Um, morning meetup episodes yesterday at well on YouTube, and he was talking about you know the reasons why like your business could be broken. Ooh. Like there's like literally like six things that I saw like he identified. Um, the first one was like maybe it could be you. You yourself is the person. Yep. Second thing, it could be maybe your price. Third thing, it could be maybe just the product or service itself. The fourth thing, I believe it was the delivery, like pretty much how it's, you know, how it's delivered to the person or so. Like, I guess the packaging, if I'm not right. mistaken. Um, I think number five was the attempts. How many people are you asking? Like, how many people are you, like, telling about your brand, your service, your product? Like, how many mm-hmm. people are you telling about it? And then I think the last one, I think I believe it was your audience. Like, are you talking to the right audience? Right. Is who your product or service for for the right person? So he was like, yeah, if, if you know, something in your business is always going to be broken and it's chances are it's going to be one of those six things. Yep. Now, obviously, it's going to differ for everybody, but it's going to be one of those six things. Um, out of those six things, do you feel like um do you could do you think you know like which one it you know which one it might be for you as of like right now um yeah i mean i could bring as i'm because i do a lot of reflecting off the rip um Mm -hmm. and i look i feel like my main thing right now is like i feel like I'm, i'm at the point where i may need to delegate certain um services that i'm doing because as of right now, I'm doing everything between creating videos, editing videos, creating designs, bringing them to life. Um, you know, I'm the the marketing, I'm the I'm, I'm everything within my business, literally everything. Yep, which is like you know that that's standard. You know, we're always gonna have to wear every single every hat at in the beginning time. You're gonna have to wear every single hat until you can got the capital Absolutely. to to, to yep. you know start delegating and paying other people to do you know yeah. certain jobs yep. And, yep and don't get me wrong i love every aspect of it but when i'm really looking at things and how i can i feel like i can be more productive if i have someone doing this for me while i can do this something, something else that's when you really start worrying about the the elevation of your brand because based off where you want to go will determine how you know what you need to do but if you if you're comfortable with just being a one man band, that's gonna be cool. But you, you put a ceiling to your to your, to everything at that point because only one person can only do so much. And even if you do yeah. gain a lot of success, you're gonna need the time it's gonna take for you to, to do things is gonna be a lot more longer. A lot more longer. I've but, I've always heard like um you know from again from like listening to the social proof 
podcast with uh, David Shans and Donnie Wiggins that I believe most entrepreneurs, like most people can get themselves to six figures by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's just now when you try to scale to like, you know, seven to eight figures, now you're like, okay, now you need to make sure you're getting like a team behind you because yeah. I don't believe like, I, I mean, well, I mean, hey, I, it could be possible, but you know, I'm, I'm truly confident that I can make it to, you know, 500,000, you know, 750K, Absolutely. you know, by myself, but you know, trying to push that million, you know, like in a year or maybe like net like net a million yeah you're gonna probably need to start putting some bodies in place to yeah. help you scale that up to to do that to attain that yeah so you know i I wholeheartedly agree about you know delegating um tasks and stuff like i used to feel like that like early on when i was doing like the the well-being stuff i'm like damn i need to pay somebody else to do marketing and stuff like that. I need to pay somebody else to do like sales. And I'm like, wait, you know what? I haven't even learned how to do this yet. So, I mean, exactly. it's like, I, it's like, I mean, I, I can reach out, but it's like, also like, I didn't have, I don't have funds to pay anybody to literally do that. So it's like, at this point right now, I just need to learn how to be a better marketer, how to hey. sell to people. Like, you know, it's just, you just got to take what what's given to you right now at your moment at, at the moment. Exactly, bro. Yo, and I'm glad you said that because that, that ties back into time. We all got time, but it's what we're doing with our time. Like, <clears throat> you can't tell me you want to be successful when you're waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I mean, 2 o'clock p.m. Yeah, I was, say it. <laughs> I was like, yo, every time I get up at, eight, at, at 3 in the morning, so. <laughs> you can't tell me you want to be successful when you're waking up at 2 o'clock and the first thing you do is turn the game. Play 2K. There's no, there's, there's no way. Their day, by the time 2 o'clock hits for certain people, their day is pretty much over. Yeah, Some people are, are up well, at I mean, 5 in the morning. And look, think about it. You think about your average work schedule time frame, right? Some people are going to work from, what, a 6 to 2 or um, a, a, a 2 to 10 or whatever. Like, anywhere within that time frame, if you put it from that perspective, 2 o'clock p.m., you're getting off of work. Now it's not like your average person if they were going in at 6 o'clock. Well, your average like, person probably, I mean, 9 nine to 5 is like the the standard like work range. But like, no, right. I see what you're saying, though. Like, you know, like that, you know, I honestly look at it as like, yeah, if you're getting up like, you know, 8, 9 o'clock at this point, it's like, okay, you know. Days kind of going, rich. but like you know, I, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming you got to be rich if if you get yeah, up at eight nine o'clock, or you just really just cool with your you know where you are. But like really? like you were saying, like if you really want to be successful, you're gonna have to get up a little early. You're gonna start your day a little earlier. Like I've gotten comfortable now getting up at four thirty, and my body gets me up naturally at four thirty in the morning, even mm -hmm. on days where I'm not going to work. Like I can naturally get up, and the latest I will absolutely probably sleep in is probably maybe like six o'clock. And like, you know, hey. a habit that I've tried to make sure that I don't do is like, you know, when I get up to try to not look at my phone because Yo, we all know that's like, we that's all know that's like less, that's a habit. Like it's, oh, we're all creatures that have it. And like, that's one habit that's like, we're all going to do it. The first yeah. thing we do, you open our eyes, we turn right over to that phone just to see what, what was going on throughout the night. Just to recap Bro. what happened last night. And I'm like, that's that is so like toxic to us. Talk to our brains. That, it's crazy you say that because I was just saying to myself the other day. I had woke up one morning. Well, for one, kudos to you for getting up at four thirty. I'm I'm not quite there yet. At that <laughs> age, if I once do that, I could do that. Um, but I had woke up one day. Oh yeah, like eight o'clock, and I had literally looked at my phone, went from swiping it up to hop on Instagram. Next, you know, hour went past by, bro. I'm just scrolling, watching other videos. Videos linked to this video. Another video linked to this video. Next, you know, an hour passed by. And it's not to say that, you know, things are, are not going to catch your attention. Of course they are. But that's an hour I could have I could have been doing something else. Yep. Literally. <laughs> and that, oh, and that shit just, plas it just passed me by from being sucked into the internet, from that being the first thing. And not only did I notice that I felt a little more, like, sluggish, I'm just not processing things as fast as I normally do when I wake up, drink water, 
shower, boom, boom. I'm I'm more on a, on a steady like ready to go shit. But mm-hmm. that the phones will really they will drain the energy out of you. Just being on behind these screens for too long, it will drain the energy out of you. It will. It will literally screen drain you. sucking is bad. It's bad, absolutely. <laughs> the sucking is bad. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna sit up and act like I'm perfect because you know things happen. And you have to you have to go through certain things so that you can talk about st- t- like certain things like this. Like if you haven't woke woken up late before, how can you speak about what it's like to wake up late and you know later message type thing? So, like I said, nobody's perfect. This is really just to get you know the views who I was watching is to be aware and be mindful of certain things. And trying to, if you're trying to get to a certain level, there's certain things you got to avoid. There's certain things you got to stop doing. You got to re- reprogram your brain because everybody wants to be successful. But now everybody don't want to put in the work. Exactly. And, you know, it ain't, it ain't nothing that you need to, like, rush into. Like, you just need to take, you know, take your baby steps. Like, if you're getting up at 8, all right, try just setting your alarm for maybe, like, you know, 6.30. And then, you know, come, you know, get adapted to that. All right, let's 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 move it back half an hour, 6 o'clock. Just take baby steps with it. Like, you ain't got to try to force it. Like, you ain't got to go from, like, 8 to trying to wake up at like 4.30 in the morning like me. Like, you ain't got to do that. Like, that's a major jump. Like, you got to take, you know, really train yourself and, be, you know, become comfortable, adapt, and then just keep changing as, you know, you start to become comfortable. Yeah, because people don't know that, bro. When, you, when you're like, when you're really trying to make change, some people can go cold turkey and just off the rip. But that's not the, that's not the idea or ideal process for everybody. You got to take steps steps day after day because one thing i learned that if you just tried to go if you say one day for example say if i'm saying i'm gonna start the gym next week and next week comes my first day i haven't worked out in so long but i just feel like i gotta go crazy for the first day after that first day me going so hard i'm not gonna want to come back the next day because (laughs) your body's gonna be Your you know body's gonna be body's screaming body. at you, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. My muscles are tense. I probably didn't get enough sleep the night before. I probably mm-hmm. didn't get the proper food. I probably didn't hydrate, so I'm probably not gonna come back the next day. Versus if I say to myself, "Okay, this week I'm going to start going to the gym. Monday I'll, I'll start off 20 minutes on the treadmill. Tuesday I'll do 20 minutes on the treadmill again, probably with some hit workouts. Wednesday I might touch a few of the machines. It's a progressive thing you got to do." Just so that I you agree. don't look back, you know what I'm saying? It's just so you don't look back and say, ah, my body's going to be hurt. I'm not going to do this no more. Mm-hmm. When, you constantly, when you steady build, building up, it's good for you to look at as far as the progress. And it's better for you just for um, building habits and routine throughout the process as well. So, like, just I for agree. the audience. Like I said, take baby steps. Yeah. It's okay. One, one foot in front of the other. Just like Nipsa, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, man. Take, take your time. Rest in peace, little, Nip. Yes, sir. Little, little progress is better than no progress. So remember that. As long as you move forward, no matter if it's a little bit of step, there's a lot. It'll be a lot better than you not stepping at all. So make sure you're moving forward. Bars. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your take on collaboration with people because as i said at the beginning of this podcast now you know like i said this was you know once just a one-man podcast where it was just just me um you know still interviewing people but you know like i said i wanted to collab with you because like I said, I felt we was kind of like we were been in the same lane. Like we both created brands, clothing brands at that, you know, apparel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I mean, outside of like that, you know, like if we want to kind of just get into, you know, like little like basic stuff. Yo, we both born in May. We're both Facts. Taurus. Facts. Both got like a like like is is really wild. Like we both like it's really crazy. Like the fact that. We've only known each other maybe what uh, eight years now, yeah, about so eight what, years, something like that. Uh, twenty sixteen, yeah, we're about about eight, like eight years, and so it's just like, damn, like yo, me and bro actually have like a a whole lot like in common. 
Yeah, like <laughs> literally, like we running, <laughs> we running this, running literally in the same lane. Yeah. Obviously, now you know we're not stepping on each other's toes and nothing like that, but we like it's like we running like parallel, you know, to each other. So yeah, bro. Um, you know, like I just felt like this collab was just like definitely necessary. It was, it was definitely beneficial. Like it would be beneficial for me because I'm like, here I am, I have a podcast, mm-hmm. and here I have bro who literally is like. Game, like we're both gaining an audience, but I definitely feel like you have, um, you might have more of a reach on audience because of you know like some like a lot like the past things you've done with like hosting like parties and stuff like that. So I know, uh, people probably you know you can manage to pull them along, and you've had the Sitchi brand going even before you even like you know stamped it and probably like trademarked it. Like you already yeah. had it yeah. going already. So, um, how how important do you feel like? it is for for people to like collaborate and you know just partner with each other absolutely so it's definitely key but for one you got to make sure you collab with the right people that um are that will gravitate the same audience that you're looking for that's for one yeah for sure got to be in alignment for two yes a lot of people think that what they get misunderstood is that okay say i want to collab with someone say i got say i have a podcast right and i'm and I got all these followers, but then there's another person that um has has a podcast as well, but it's not buzzing at all. Meaning that they're not too much of a following, um, don't really know too much about what's going on, and that and that person wants to collab with the person that's making all the noise. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's like okay, the only thing that's gonna come out of this is exposure for the person that's trying to come up, and which it, it can essentially turn into as being a favor. Because really speaking, with a collab, you want to see you want you're trying to join forces so that you guys can both mutually benefit off each other. Because if one person benefits, you see the, the a favor is being done. Or I was about to say, yeah, I was like, a favor is more so like, yeah, I'm just doing this right for you. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. I'm not getting anything out of this. Like, that's that's a favor to me. Like, yeah, I'm doing this and I'm not getting anything out of it. But like, right. So when you when you collab, think about to yourself: is this a favor or are we mutually growing? And when I look at it between me and you, this is a mutual grown thing because what you're doing and what I'm doing, we can bene- we're, we're, we're benefiting in overall from the knowledge, from the resources, from the execution, experiences, yeah, experiences. Like I have a lot to I have a lot to share as far as knowledge and experience. You as well. We both got brands, so in our audiences are within the same, we're, we're, we're all within like the same umbrella. Whether you're talking about your fitness, because even with fitness, my message still relates to that as well. You can't tell me you want to lose fifty pounds with a negative mindset. You got to be positive, and that's how that even right right then and there, it's it's a tie right then and there. So our messages are are very similar. Um, the meaning behind it is all within under the same umbrella with the with the positivity, and. You know, it it it's, it's, it makes sense. It, it makes sense all the way for me for us to be doing this together. When you look at it from that perspective, or any other perspective you want to look at it, it's like we're both we're both um, reaching towards positivity. We both want the best for one another in our audience to really get the real deal about life, fitness, um, execution, whatever the case may be. We're, we're mm-hmm. still we're, we're pushing whether it's motivation, positivity. We're pushing the same idea message overall with everything and and that's how we can join forces and really benefit from each other that way you know no i agree like um you know there's not many i've i've had quite a few like different like partnerships and like collabs like even with this podcast thing you know shout out to you know my boy sev and trey you know like that that was like one of like my first like very first podcasts like I ever considered doing like that was a three man podcast, mm-hmm. you know, we only made it to like seven episodes, but that was just due to the fact that I, at the time I can be, you know, I'll, I, I can, I'll openly say this, you know, I think at the time I might've been like a little selfish for wanting to kind of just run solo and kind of have my own thing, mm-hmm. you know, even though like a three man thing was, you know, it was solid. It was just, you know, the timing of it, you know, just, it was just a little off for me and like i kind of just i've always had this thing where i was like man i kind of want to try this myself like i always want to 
I always be feeling like I have to do this myself. I want to try this myself. I got to be a solo artist. But then realizing I'm like, yo, like, you you can make it solo artist. But I think when you have, um, when you have somebody that, that you can, you know, align with mm-hmm. and, like, you guys want to share the same, you guys all have, like, the same mindset and kind of want to share, like, the same kind of, like, value why throw that away why not take the opportunity to make that work and so like here i am again you know this is almost three years later now that here i am i'm now going from you know podcast you know solo podcast to now all right well now i just made this a duo yeah so now man. be a duo podcast so yeah, bro. Um, like, yeah. like just like we were saying, bro. It, it, it the biggest thing with collabing or doing anything with anybody else, bro, is making sure the person's aligned with your message and your, your type of um showcase of whatever, whatever you're doing. Because a lot of people try to join forces with people, and the the work ethic's not there. One person can end up doing a lot more work than the other, and that's never fair. Like it got to be a mutual thing all around because. I don't want to join forces with nobody that's not working hard, just as hard as me, or if not harder. Like my main, even when I when I decide to really start delegating and having people hire on the team, if you're not working, I need you to work hard. I need you to want it more than I do because me wanting the right one is already a high level, but I need you to want it even more because there's no room for for nothing average here. There's nothing here is average, and I just need people around because if you want it more than I do. Then I can still learn from you, although I'm putting you in position. And you never want to be in a position where you're the smartest person in the room. You know, you know it all because at the end of the day, you're under a cage. Where can you learn from? Who can you lean to for any type of resource or or knowledge or experience or something? You know, so that's why I it's agree. important. I always have people around that you can learn from constantly because if you're the smartest person, the smartest person in the room, then it's only going to go so far. You know, right? You, and then. Uh, like with like your team and stuff like that, like, you know, obviously you're bringing in people who are, you know, great at whatever you need, whatever task you need fulfilled. And I'm mm-hmm. sure like they have like, you know, an expertise where like somewhere you're just like, oh, okay. I really didn't know that. I'm glad I hired you because yeah. <laughs> now you just figured out something that I, I would have never known about that I never heard of. So, you know. I I totally agree with, you know, having, you know, um, oh my God, with having people who are in alignment. Oh, I don't know. I had a brain fart there. Um, I would have people, you know, having people who are aligned, like on like your, your team and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm, I'm very like meticulous when it comes to like doing like certain things. Like I always want things done a certain so way. Absolutely. And so, like, if you can't abide by that, then you know, you personally, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want you on the team. For one, I'll make you understand the value of the team. Now, if you can, if I show you a way to do something, you know, I want it done that way. Unless you can provide me with a way that is more efficient and more effective, right? What yeah. I'm not gonna do is that you know, I'm not gonna, you know, hound you about like, you know doing something a certain way. I won't hound you about it because I want to, you know, give people their space and, you know, creativity to, you know, you know, flex, flex their skills and let you do what you got to do. I mean, I, the only thing, the only real main thing for me is just making sure you're you're held accountable and making sure that you're getting done what needs to get done. Absolutely. Make sure the drive's there. The passion got to be there because bro, like I said, when you relate back to how we was, we had certain jobs and, I'm victim to this as well. Like, there's certain jobs I had before where I'm like, shit, if I know I get off at this time, I'm going to just milk the clock and go to the bathroom for a little bit and just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or some real shit. Like, that's really what it was about. It was really just, like, milking the time out. Like, yeah, I ain't, it's whatever. I don't really care too much. But in all reality, you need people that are not going to be like that because you need shit to get done a certain way. Things have to be efficient. Things have to ha- have to stay in play, have, have these systems. And... You're only as strong as the weakest link. So if you got someone that's that's bullshitting and doing, it's all going to affect the the workspace, the workflow somehow, some way. 
So just staying on your P's and Q's and, and, and just staying locked in, man, making sure you're here because you want to be here, not because you're just trying to make a come up because you, you already, people do come or up. Just get a check, you know. Right. And it's not like, you know, you, you want to make everything genuine. And, you know, you just want the hunger to be there. I, I, I don't want you to be here just because you have to be here. Be here because you want to be here and you want to learn and grow and, and be the best you can be. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. I mean, let's, I mean, if you want to really keep it like a hundred though, like let's be honest, they ain't, and it, they, I don't think there's really ever been a job where I was just like, yeah, I can see me doing this for the rest of my life or it's just like, eh, I was kind of just here to kind of just collect it, you know, kind of just do it. Like I'm kid to just collect a check. You know, I'm just here. I'll be honest. I, there, there are jobs like that. Cause to be honest, I've never really seen my, I haven't stayed, I've never stayed at a job more than I think four years i think the yep. ymca was the only job that i've managed to stay at more than four years every well, other you... job i had has literally just been like th it's been like maybe like a summer job or mm -hmm. like i've been there maybe less than maybe like two and a half years because i'm constantly really? trying to figure out like what i like and i'm like yo this corporate world just it ain't for me like i don't want to do this like i don't want to have to set an alarm to go to work and help build somebody else's dream. Like I want freedom. Like I want to be able to wake up on my own time and you know I know that I, while I'm sleeping, I got money coming in. in that cash flow. You know, like I I want that time freedom. Like that's always been my why. Like just to have the time freedom. Like yeah. I don't ever. I I mean I know I've you know I've said like financial freedom to myself plenty of times. But it's like, mm, you know, do are we ever really like financially free? Because it's just like, at the end of the day, we still live in this world where you have to pay Uncle Sam. And it's like I said, there's always something in your business that's going to be broken. So it's just like, you're always going to have money problems. You know, money is always going to be a problem. So I was like, I never ever look at, I, I don't really say financial freedom anymore. I always just kind of just lock in on time freedom. Like, just give me the time to do I want the time to do whatever the hell I want. In that twenty four hour period, I wanna do what I want. The money I mean when the money the money will come in, I can find ways to make money. Um obviously I wanna have an abundance of it because you know, shout out to Ash Cash, abundance is your birthright. Mm -hmm. Um or is our birthright. But time man, because it's so time is so such time is such a luxury. Yeah, and I right. want all of it. And you know, again, quoting another man that see, see, I got so many guys that I just really I listen to because they they put the right things in my ear. Pause. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, George, George Ash Ashen Pong from Melon and Money. Mm -hmm. Um, you know him and Carter Coalfield. You know, I started following them last year, and you know, I, he says something at every time at the beginning of his episodes. He's like, uh, the faster you get to your dream life the longer you can live it and i'm like i gotta get to it yeah, yeah. every time i hear it say it, every time i hear him say it, like i'm like i have to get to it like yo mm -hmm. i can i gotta stop playing i can't i can't keep fooling around like yo get on it so that way you can get to my so i can get to my dream life yeah because it's like it can happen in the instant all all i all, all a person really needs is one product, one service. You just need one thing to hit. That's all you need. You don't need a bunch of things to hit. You literally just need to find something and have that one thing hit. Yeah, bro. And stay consistent and with that. It's funny you say that because a lot of people think you gotta have all, all types of products and all types of little selling things to get. But when you find that winning piece. It's over. It's... Congratulations, you won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I won, but at least I like. Okay, I see, I see where this is going. So I ain't gonna stop the momentum. Yeah, that, that's that's what I mean. Like, like you won it, as if you found a prize winning. Um, heard you. Okay, I heard you. Got, you, know got you. Just so I that understand. You know, now I, I just put all you gotta do now is just market the whole market the hell out of it. Like, yep. like just stick that's with how it. I felt like that's how I felt with um. When I started doing the Amazon FB, the Amazon FBM, when I learned that grind last year, I was like, oh, shoot, this is a lot easier than trying to 
do the regular e-commerce route of, you know, trying to create your own product, slapping your logo on that product and then having to market that product. Like it's a lot harder to do that versus the FBM that I've been doing where you're already leveraging. Well, first of all, you're leveraging Amazon's marketplace and then you're leveraging the, the big brands. So all you need to do is just scan them, list them on your store and boom, it's literally almost like drop shipping. Except this time, you know, there's already like it's you you may just have to do the shipping out yourself. I mean, if you go to FBA route, it's almost like that. But um yeah, I was just like, yo, I've made damn near almost like what, ten I think I've always made like ten K from that almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean like last year I think I made about eight I made about eight something. Made about eight K. Um, but like I did again, you know, because of my lack of inconsistency, you know, being transparent, you know, I stopped when the, the store, when it started slowing down, like when I wasn't getting orders in by around like September, October, things just started slowing down. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm good on this when I didn't, when I should have just, you know, just continue to just continue to grind and continue to just keep scanning products and keep, you know, being consistent with just, you know, sourcing um, because it, it comes a time where you're going to have that downtime. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not going to make any money from the month of, I think my lat, like my final payout of 2023, I think it was probably like November, it was like October or November, beginning of November. And from November all the way up until February of this year, I didn't make a dime. I didn't make a dime. But that's the thing, though. Like that, at the at these points, those, these points are really key. Um, these moments are really key because this is where you have to put in your creativity and figure out how you can make up for for the losses that's going on right now, or what you could be doing to try to advance in any type of way. Because things are not gonna always like just like a basketball player, LeBron James. He's not gonna score forty every single night. This nice where he has 40, <laughs> 50, 20. I mean, at this age now, asking him to do it, that's just kind of outrageous. But, you know, he, he, the, he do it if he got to. Right. Just the idea, though, of knowing that things are not going to be 100% every single time, or a high level, a high, like, earning every single time will help you prepare for when things are low. You got to get, get in that creativity bag. Like, when, when for me, when things are not moving as, as, as I want them to be, Let's get creative. Let's make a video about it. Let's talk about why it wasn't working or why people think it wasn't working. What could I have done better? What can I do better? What have I done in the past in my drops, my successful drops that I haven't um, done in this drop? It's really just getting a little more, getting your hands dirty a little more to try to figure it out. It's, all, it's always like, it's always some type of math or problem solving or or, or trying to put pieces to the puzzle um, when it comes to things like that because... All this stuff that's happening right now, it, people look at it and think it's new, but it ain't nothing but a rerun. <laughs> it ain't nothing but a rerun, you know? And you just got to know and have that knowledge and, and confidence and positivity instilled in you to, to just, just to know that I could be down today and up tomorrow. You just, you just got to pivot. Oh, that's, how, that's how I honestly see it. You just got to learn to pivot. And like, like I mentioned earlier, like, um, there's always going to be something broken in your business. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, chances are, like I said, out of those six things that I listed, whether it's you, your product, your price, the delivery, the attempts, the audience, again, it's going to be one of those six things. And one of those things is off. So you just got to be willing to like adapt and just, all right, like you said, just sit down and kind of just evaluate. really, really, yeah, just evaluate and just, all right, let's just pivot now. But you know what I think we need more of? Like, we need more, you know, we need to get together with more, uh, with more, with others who are also thinking on the, who are on the same frequency as us. So that way we can hold like these masterminds and write these off. Cause they're, absolutely. I, you know, I, I got, I got, I, I, when I learned the tax game from the boys in Melanin Money from, you know, George and shout out to Carter Cofield for when I, I bought his tax call la- last year. That's what I, gotta I learned, yo, believe me, I, I might have spent a hefty bag on it, but you know what? Now I understand the tax game. Mm-hmm. And for this year, for the past taxes for 2023, they owed me money. Mm. 
I ain't owe the IRS no Uncle Sam ain't get a dime from me this year. I ain't mm. owe them nothing. That's what's up, so when I learned the tax cool. game, yo, changed my life. It is literally perfect. So if you are an entrepreneur, or or yes, if you're an entrepreneur business owner, that's who the tax code is for. Tax code is not meant for employees. And that's why most of the time we you're gonna probably owe money to Uncle Sam at the end of the year. But if you become an entrepreneur, a business owner, and you start getting those deductions, yeah, yeah, you can you can really knock down how much you pay in taxes. So like that's just the cheat code right there that I learned last year to share with y'all. So make sure y'all check out Carter Cofield. Great tax advisor, great CPA, just great guy with money overall. So y'all check him out. Um Wow, bro. Woo. You know what in, you know what <laughs> It's been <laughs> something, man. It's been something. Um, man, uh What do you feel? All right, you know, let's let's we'll take a little little, little twist and turn here. What's your take on all of this hip hop beef going on, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Cuz like, I mean, like I I've, I've kind of I've kind of managed to stay caught up with it. Like I'm trying to put all the pieces together to see like what songs are going where, but it, it's been kind of just going crazy lately like you know, to, to my knowledge now, now, I don't know how well you know, but okay, from from what I recollect, Kendrick throws the did first diss record, from my from my understanding. J Cole now throws back with you know the might delete me later the seven minutes joint. Um, then I know Drake he had a response also to Kendrick, mm -hmm. and then yeah, I'm trying to like keep up with it, and then I heard another joint where. Rick Ross got involved Ooh. and he's coming at Drake and I'm just like I think Drake responded to that and then I'm I'm like all over the place with it. And then the other day I'm hearing Chris Brown throwing shots at Quavo Ooh. and then Quavo threw another shot at Chris Brown. I'm just like, yo, what I mean I, I listen, I I love hip hop beef, like to be honest. Like I love it. I think the culture kinda needs it right now, but you know, um, have you been able to keep up with it? Like, do you do you know what's going on? Like, yeah, I know a little something. <laughs> oh man, well, first things first. I'm a I'm a future fanatic. That's for one, and that's the only reason why I got hip to what's going on because the whole future Drake, Metro Boomin, bro. It's, honestly, I think it's just nonsense, bro. To be honest, like, and I'm not. I'm like, I'm at a stage now where I'm. I'm not. I don't care for this beef bullshit, dog. Just put this good music out and call it a day. Because now, bro, at the end of the day, like, like I said, I'm a, I'm a diehard Future fan, and you know, Drake, Drake's, he's a monster, and we can never forget what him and Future did with the with the time to be alive. But now with this with this beef, it's just like, damn, we ain't gonna get a, what a time to be alive too, and that shit hurts me more. Than <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And that shit hurts me more than anything, bro, because they when they got in the booth together, they put it's magic. And the fact that it, it seemed like they beefing over a, a shorty or one of them smash someone else's shorty. And, like, it's just nonsense, dog. Like, come on. I, 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 I agree in a matter of, like, like, you know, obviously if it's over, like, women and shit like that, then, you know, petty shit like that, yeah, I, I, I don't care as much. But, you know, for me personally, I I I don't mind it to be honest. Like I I enjoy finally hearing guys throw shots at each other because I do feel like like the hip hop has just been a little too. Uh, you know what? Let me not even sugarcoat it. Hip hop game has just been too friendly. It has been. At least at least you know from like our OGs and stuff like that. You know. 50 came out shooting at everybody. 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 Every you know, single body. that whole era with Jay-Z and Nas going at each other, 50 throwing shots at each other, Jada kissing beans going at each other, like, yo, T.I. and Ludacris and T.I. and Flip and oh, all man. these guys that were just having problems with, like, man, like, obviously, you know, I don't want it to ever, like, you know, get to, like, violence or anything like that, but 
if you did if, if, if you just keeping it a buck and just throwing you know just some words on the paper and just you know showing us your liquid sword pause yo then i i i ain't mad at it let, let let's uh, let's go with it like let's go to be I mean, honest, if, I, if i'm if i'm gonna call it like right now i mean like i did like kendrick's verse for show on like on was it like 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 that is it like called that, like, like that? that so you know that was solid um and you know j cole came back with the the seven minutes watch so i was just like whoa <laughs> yeah, <it> was, yeah <laughs> i was like whoa like, i'm not going my lie. guy but it's just like you at the end of the day it's like okay, okay yeah this little rap beef or whatever you want to call it it's entertaining but then it's like, yo. Yeah, I, I know it definitely is got to be for like you know entertainment purposes or so. And I just hope uh, it stays that way because I'm like, yo, like I said, these are people that can really make great music together if they join forces, bro. Oh yeah, which I'm like, I'm, they they've all done like a, a probably I'm sure like a bunch of times. Yeah. Cause, you know, just I I don't mind a little a little controversy. That's just me though. Like like I said, I think as long as you just keep it, you know, just straight rap and just keep like the violence like out of it mm-hmm. then you know this is hip hop yeah. I enjoy it um I can so, dig it I mean yeah you know yeah everybody might have their different takes on it but you know like I said this is hip hop and I just feel like it's, it's it has been just a little too too friendly like I do feel like a little competition is necessary you know maybe like now and then to kind of just you know just spice things up a little bit mm-hmm you know, so nah, yeah, yeah, you know, I guess it's cooling. I guess I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, I guess we can rock with it for now. Uh, oh man, oh bro, it's been quite a episode here. Absolutely, um, a lot, a lot, of, lot of game dropped. Um. Yeah, I know. I really am looking forward to you know making this collaboration you know blow up like for real. So well, absolutely, that's what's gonna. You do. know, I, I'm, I'm I thank you and appreciate you again for you know agreeing to become a part of you know what I was building here. You know, even though I'm still kind of you know still trying to get my head above water and swim. I'm still can I I ain't drowning yet. You know, I'm I'm, I'm still contrading. I'm still treading water. Yeah, it might yeah. be a little slow. I I ain't getting full, you know, but as long as you uh, butterfly forward. stroke or nothing like that yet. But I'm I'm getting there, you know. Like we, I'm working. I'm moving through the water yeah. at my pace. So, um, just thank you again, bro, for being part of this platform. And like I said, man, I hope this oh, yeah. just becomes like a real magical thing, and just, oh, we just we take it off to the takes off to the moon. Bro, we going we going we going to the moon with this. That's for sure. Agree, <laughs> we going agree. To the moon. We're definitely going to the moon with it, you know? And like I said, I appreciate you allowing me to come on here and speak my mind and, and give this free game and, you know, just be a part of something great because the future the future needs this. We need it. Freaking everybody needs this, bro. And if you look at it, it's like, yo, only time we're seeing things like this is from people that we don't know that are far out. Like, this is going to be something more that's going to be for the people that are within reach of us as well, that can can hear us, maybe even see us in person, and and really just grow and know, like, cause it's like, yo, a lot of our audience are people that we grew up with, and when, you, when people look at that, look at it from this perspective as like, okay, I'm watching his podcast, I grew up with him, he made it this far, I can do the same thing. So what it's gonna do now is it's gonna motivate other people to either do the same thing we're doing or actually attack their dreams and their goals that they actually want to do because we're, we're, we're setting goals, we're making it happen, and we're going to keep doing the same thing. And we're showing you that I'm just like you. I'm no different from you. The only difference is I'm focused, I'm locked in, and I'm doing things that make sense. You Agreed. can do it too. Get I mean, to be honest, I just hope that, you know, the people that we, you know, that watch and see this, you know, the people's around us, Mm-hmm. You know, that they don't wait too long to go after the things that they want or be scared to yeah. take those risks because, like Snoop Dogg said, you know, like, we're going to be up here and our peoples is going to be down here. And as we go up, 
your peoples, they need to close the gap. Yeah, I'm not coming back down to save you. You need to, you, I'm up here now. Like, you need yeah. to be closing the gap. Closing so, that gap. Yeah, man. Um, I just hope that they just don't wait too long because let's be honest, like, there's going to become a point where we, we, we might just become out of reach. Yeah. Now you're going to have to talk to my assistant to, before you hear me, you're going to have to talk to my assistant. You have to talk to my security. Like, you're going to have to go through barriers to to get to me because you know i'm not saying i'm gonna act all you know brand new and bougie but it's just like you know if i become a very very valuable person like yo i'm not just gonna waste time with like uh, i'm not gonna be doing that bro like i'm I'm not gonna what what may say i don't understand the language of people with short money Mm -hmm. yeah like i (laughs) when i get to that point like yo i I don't. I. I. I ain't, I ain't messing with nobody who just you. You wasn't there. Yeah. You had. To, you had. You have to be there. Like, don't. Don't wait for me to 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 get there for, to get here, and then all of a sudden now you want me to help you? Not. Nah. While we while I'm going through this, tag mm-hmm. along with me, and when yeah. then we can help each other That's climb it. that ladder together. But I'm not. I'm not pulling nobody up. I refuse to pull anybody up. I ain't pulling a damn soul up. Bro, all that entitled entitlement and all that comes in, but it's like, yo, you didn't put none of this work in. Yeah, we grew up together, but did you put the work in? Did you put the money up? Did you sacrifice the time like I did? Did you put your money on the line, not knowing whether or not it's going to work or not? But had the positive mindset to, to, to know it's going to work, and it did work? Were you with me when I tried to take that risk? No. And you think that just because we grew up together, I, I owe you something. Not happened. Not happened. Entitlement. Like, man, no, Not listen. Happened. I don't know too many people that feel entitled. I I personally don't. Um, but I'm sure there probably are plenty of people oh, out there. I'm sure absolutely. there are plenty of people out there. I'm sure probably when you know, when I make it, you know, to like a high enough value status that I'm gonna probably have people who are gonna feel entitled. But I'm like, listen, you ain't nobody's entitled to anything. Like nobody's entitled what to did you anything. Do? Like, what did you mountain do on some road? Like, what did you do? <laughs> like, for real, what did you do for to feel like I'm responsible for your life now? Like, what did you do? And that's what you got to think about. People don't. People just feel like oh, I'm responsible for this. me and my family. Right. <laughs> like, like, oh, he's doing this. He 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 acting bougie. You now he can't do this for No, it's not about that. Because I do one favor. Now you're mad because I didn't do this favor. Now you're mad because I didn't do this favor. You can do people. You can help someone a hundred times. That one time you tell him no, now niggas is fake. Now he too good for us. Oh, he changed. He too Hollywood. And it's glad to know that's probably just. I, I, it's glad to know that that's all the feelings that you've been holding them for the longest time. You was hey, waiting to finally that, just now expose that. That's how you truly felt this whole entire time. Because I had a vision and I was willing to put my neck out there. To go after it and attack and you know go achieve my dreams, and you just wanted to sit there and complain, complain and just watch I, from the sidelines. You didn't want to get you didn't want to get in the game. They didn't want to get in the game. So, like, what the, <laughs> ain't I mean, nothing I can do for you. Right now, but yo, listen, let me let me get off my chest. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> please get it off your chest, bro. Oh, you already going on top. Listen to this, like, right? <laughs> Problems are gonna occur, occur in life. They're gonna occur no matter what, and whether you're successful or not successful. The biggest thing is your mindset, because I can have a problem occurring to me right now. But if I say to myself, "I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna figure this out." Guess what I'm gonna do? Figure it out. But if I sit here and complain, "Oh, I don't have enough money for this bill. They're overcharging me." What is that gonna do? Besides, get your ass kicked out. Nothing. So mm. when there's a problem that occurs, don't think to yourself, oh, if somebody's focused, they didn't give me no money to pay for a bill or something. Think to yourself, how can I be proactive right now and make it where it's never going to be an issue again? Ask yourself those questions. Because we feel like every time something go, something go wrong, it's everybody else's fault <laughs> but yours. You gotta be a is, You're responsible for your happiness, your mental, your wealth, all the above. Because I could be broke and still be happy, and I could be rich and be miserable. 
I heard you. Remember that. Like, like, listen, like, man. Of oh, course. <laughs> hey, we just get we just get started, killing man. We just getting started, man. It's the first episode, and we went crazy, man. And yo, we got some more gems again. Cause I, I'm I'm ready to go for another five more hours, but you know we got to go. <laughs> listen. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah. listen. This is believe me. I created this platform so I can believe me. I could get some shit off my chest for real. This is, I, I listen. A lot of people know me that I don't really talk a lot, but oh, I've gotten to a point now where I'm just oh. like, you know what? What what Andre yeah. three? What Andre three K say? The self got something to say. Yeah, killer got something to say. Yeah, let and it normally out. I don't. I don't speak. I don't like to speak on a lot of stuff because most of the time I try not to speak on things that I don't have knowledge of. But there's a lot of opinions that a lot of people might, you know, they they might ask my opinion on it. Sometimes I don't have an opinion on it. No, we don't um, have because cool. they're not gonna have, you know. But I did. I'll, I'll I'll tell you this. Like, there's a lot of things where I'm just like, I need to get off. I got at least, no, nah, I can't say thirty years because I want to say at least probably since what kindergarten. I want to say roughly about f- tw- tw- twenty five years worth of things that I need to say. Absolutely. Because this is this this has been a lot that I've just been quiet about my entire life. And then, you know, I think I'm tired of being the, like the real like reserve type man. Absolutely. Let's like, talk about nobody's really seen me unhinged and really, you know, shoot from the shoot from the lip. Yeah. They, that they, was just they they ain't they ain't seen me go crazy yet. They, they, ain't nobody really seen me really go off yet. They, ever. They, so, they ain't seen that with me either. I got a, I, I got a, I got a lot to say. In my, this Taurus right here, this is, this is about to be something different. Like it's about to get crazy because like you think you see you think you think Dame Dash is wild and always be yelling at people and you wild, and even though you know you know that's just you don't really. Like, I think some people just misunderstood misunderstand Dame, but yeah, yeah Dame it's just. Pretty- Everything he say makes sense. It it just don't make sense to the person that you know what I'm saying that's not getting to it. Yeah, no, it's just most right. people just look at it as like combative, like the way he's it's just how he says it. That's how he says it. Because he so he put so much, you know, um energy into what he's saying. Like this mm-hmm. so the patch such a powerful punch, pause, that it's just like, yo, damn bro, why are you so aggressive about it? Like, no, he's not aggressive about it. He's just passionate about it. Like oh, very passionate. This, this is all it is. It's passionate. Like you understand, like, now that I think about it, bro, like, Taurus really are, like, the shit. Like, really thinking about it, I'm, like, thinking about, yo, like, someone, like, like, look at Dame Dash, who's just, like, a pro- prolific speaker, man. That man goes after everything that he wants. Someone like 19 Keys. Shout out to 19 Keys. Brother, the thought leader, ain't scared of shit, man. Mm-hmm. Um, look at Malcolm X. <sighs> Another well, thought leader, man. Things that he went through, like fearless. Like yeah. Taurus, Taurus is really fearless, like out here. So I think it's about time that I like officially kind of tap all the way into that. Absolutely. So, we got a, we got a lot we to, to give. go there. We got a lot to give, and I can't of... wait till we get into these other topics about women entitlement. Oof. I don't want to go into oh, oh, entitlement, and we we literally just briefly covered yeah, entitlement, bro. but now, yeah, but now you know, now now we know we can probably we we can have a little conversation about entitlement, men entitlement, and you know, women entitlement. So just we gonna get into that for sure. Here, Definitely, bro. This was a good one, though, man. No, this I agree. Really facts. So again, y'all, make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure y'all tap in with Sitchy as well. Um, what's what's the YouTube channel, bro? The YouTube channel is Sitchyville. That is Sitchyville. T C H Y V I L L E. I'll make sure to put those down in the show notes and in the description. Yes, yes. Make this sure has been the MG Podcast, y'all. We out of here. We out of here, deuces.